AD all day. The two most common things you will be asked to calculate for quadrilaterals is their area and their perimeter. I think both of these things are pretty intuitive to most people. Most people have done this before, but that does not mean that they cannot cook up hard questions involving these things, as we will see in a second. So let's just talk about how to find each of these things for your different quadrilaterals. For area, uh, you can think of it, sometimes people think of it as length times width, or if you have something like a square, like this first shape here, where all of your sides are the same. I think sometimes people think of that as just side squared, and that is legit as well. Over the way, I like to think of area for your quadrilaterals is just base times height, because I think that sort of fits well for all of your different quadrilaterals. And so in the case of a square, base times height would be side squared or x squared, uh, given the way I labeled it here. And so those two are the same things. And when you have a rectangle, so this shape here is a rectangle, you have a length and a width. The length is just whatever side is the longer one. It doesn't matter how it's oriented. If it's oriented horizontally or vertically, the length is just whatever side is longer. And so here, length times width would work. But again, in this case here, your width would be your height, your length would be your base. So base times height works as well. And the place where base times height, I think, I think it starts uh, making a little bit more conceptual sense is when we start talking about parallelograms and rhombi. Because here, in a parallelogram, for example, so we'll say well, your opposite sides are equal. So we'll say these two sides are x and these two sides here are y. You wouldn't say that the area of this parallelogram here is x times y. And so if we think of area as being base times height, if we say y here is our base, what that means is in order for something to be a height, it has to be perpendicular to that base. It has to connect to the opposite vertex while being perpendicular to y. And so the height of this parallel par parallelogram here would really be something like this line here. Let me get rid of this x so I can draw it. We'd have to draw an imaginary line that is perpendicular to y if you were to have extended this. And so this line here is your height. And so for this parallelogram, you would say its area is y times h in this case, if we're saying y is our base. And the same thing is true for a rhombus where all of your sides are the same length. This is not like our square, though. We cannot say the area here is x squared because if we say x is our base, well, then our x here is not its height, you would have to find that height. So, area would be equal to x times h in this case. And so, base times height, I think, works for all of your different quadrilaterals. What is perimeter? And so, perimeter is just the length around your quadrilateral. And so, these are a little bit more straightforward. So, for our square, where all our sides are the same, your perimeter would just be for x or our rectangle. It would just be since we have two lengths that are the same and two widths that are the same, just be 2L plus 2W. For our parallelogram, it would be the same thing. In uh, this case, it would be 2X plus 2Y based on that we have it labeled. And then for a rhombus, just like our square, your perimeter would just be 4x because all the sides are the same. And so let's look at a problem where we have to calculate both area and perimeter. A piece of wire 60 inches long is cut into two pieces, with one piece bent into the shape of a square and the other piece bent into, th into the shape of a rectangle. If the width of the square is double the width of the rectangle and the square has an area of 44, what is the length of the rectangle? So, a bit of a complicated problem. To start, I just want to understand what is going on. And so, I have a piece of wire that I know is 60 inches long. And then I cut it. Now, it does not tell us where you cut this piece of wire. So, you don't know that one piece is 20 inches and the other is 40. Uh, you don't know if it was cut evenly so that they're both 30 inches. It could be that one piece is 59 inches and the other is 
one inch. All you know is somewhere it is cut. And so once I cut it, this diagram is not going to be to scale necessarily, but you still can label your two pieces. And so if I say this first piece has a length of X inches, I do know the second one has to have a length that is 60 minus X inches because together they still have to sum to 60 inches. And so then it says one is made into a square, one is made into a rectangle. So let's say this is our square. And this is our rectangle. So what do I know? If this comes from, if my square here came from a piece of wire that is X inches and it was folded into a square, so each side is the same length, uh, what does the length have to be for each of those sides? Well, there's four sides that each have to be X over four. inches. So for a rectangle to start, let's just say so. We got our two lengths and our two widths. If the width of the square is double the width of the rectangle, and so what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to get everything in terms of a single variable x. And so my square has a width of x over four inches, and the width of my rectangle should be half of that meaning the width of my rectangle should be x over 8 inches. And so we can replace our w's here with x over 8. If the width of the square is double the width of the rectangle and the square has an area of 44, what is the length of the rectangle? So our square has an area of 44, and it should be a 44 square inches, I guess. That would be the units. And so what does that mean? So for our square, the area is just base times height or side squared. So x over 4 times x over 4 is x squared over 16. And that should be equal to 44. We can use this. We should be able to solve for x. So x squared is equal to 16 times 44. And this is where your properties of exponents and square roots comes into play. So if I'm trying to solve for x, it should just be the square root of 16 and 44. And I know that I can then break this up. And so if I want to simplify this, I'm trying to extract as many square roots as I can. And so this is just the same as the square root of 16 times the square root of 44. And the square root of 16 I know is 4. So this is 4 red 44. And I if I want to keep going, simplify it as much as I can, I want to see if I can extract any more perfect squares from under this radical. And I know I can break up the square root of 44 into the square root of 11 times the square root of 4, because 11 times 4 is 44. And so the square root of 4 is just 2. 2 times 4 is 8. So x should be equal to 8 rad 11. I know I got my width here in terms of x already. It's x over 8, and I know x is equal to 8 rad 11. So this width here should be 8. equal to 8 rad 11 over 8, which is just rad 11. So now, I only have one variable left. I got this L, which is the thing I'm solving for. How can I solve it? Well, I can use the thing. What do I know? I don't know the area uh, for my rectangle. What I do know, though, is its perimeter, right? Because the length around my, my rectangle should be the same as the length of the piece of wire that I started with. No wire was lost when I bent it into a rectangle. So the perimeter of my rectangle should be equal to 60 minus X, which I now know is 60 minus 8 rad 11. And so 2L plus 2 rad 11, or 2 times my width, would be equal to 60 minus 8 rad 11. Now I just got to solve for L. So I get 2L is equal to, if I subtract 2 rad 11 from each side, 2L is equal to 60 minus 8 rad 11 minus 2 red 11. So how can I combine these terms? 
This is the same as if I just had 60 minus 8x minus 2x. So if you had that, 60 minus 8x minus 2x, that would just be 60 minus 10x, right? Same thing here. This would just be, in this case, x is just equal to rad 11. So 2l is equal to 60 minus 10 rad 11. And then if I divide each side by 2, I should have my value for l. 60 minus 10 rad 11 all over 2. This should be equal to what? 30 minus 5 rad 11. And so that seems pretty good. Based on the way the answer choices are formatted, though, I think they want us to factor out this 5. And so L should be equal to, if I factor out the 5, 5 times 6 minus rad 11. 30 minus 5 rad 11. Right. Yes. This should be my answer. 5 times 6 minus rad 11. B. That is a good problem for testing everything you should know about area and perimeter or two of your most common quadrilaterals. And if you can do this question, you can do pretty much any other question where they're asking you about area or perimeter. So let's do some more videos with quadrilaterals.